let's move ahead let's welcome our next prolific keynote speaker dr martha buchenfeld she's a partner and the dean of the metaverse academy holds several advisory mandates including gen2 asset rush she's also an ambassador for all stars women nft club and now uh, a metaverse women network of founders entrepreneurs and investors and beyond gender agenda which seeks to improve the long term international competitiveness of the german economy by integrating diversity equity and inclusion into the dna of listed and medium sized companies dr martha bokenfeld has extensive experience in the platform economy dynamic ecosystems digital business digital transformation the metaverse and customer experience dr martha's keynote today will focus on the newest trends in web 3.0 nfts and metaverse dr martha it's a privilege to welcome you to crypto world conference yeah thank you very much for having me so i hope uh, the technique works and i have uh, yes. already yeah so you can see my slides already can you see it not yet not yet we can see your slides but just i think it's just coming up because i have already our um basically put on sharing can you check that please for me yeah it is just uh, no we cannot see your slides i think you'll have to share them again okay i stop sharing let's see if that works um give me a second share screen is it sharing now yes it's yes we can see it thank you let's yes so the stage is all yours okay wonderful so i had the opportunity also to listen uh, to some of the discussions we had before uh and i'm extremely excited now hopefully to pull it all together and when we say where are we now or what are the latest trends then i would say you need to have this kind of update every minute every second as the metaverse never sleeps so let me perhaps start with why we are, uh, care about the metaverse and why we why we should dive into this and as we all know there are a lot of estimates of how big the metaverse is and one of the estimates is even it's between 10 or 30 trillion until 2030 so while these numbers are very big and no one really knows exactly where this will lead us to it's very clear that this will lead us to big growth and for us obviously the business opportunities and also the big question is how can we improve people's life with the metaverse what are the opportunities we have there so it's not only about the money but it's also about what can the metaverse do for us what are the kind of use cases then obviously the first question will always be what is a metaverse and you can ask many many questions including myself i wouldn't um call myself an expert because i believe that no one is a real expert for now as there is so much not clear and so much in the making so it's the same as would if you would have asked her at the beginning of the internet what is the internet no one could really tell you so it's something where we are on a journey and it's very exciting because we are all part of this journey and the sooner we realize all the opportunities we have the more we can also shape it so i am very inspired by uh, one guru i would say of the metaverse his matthew ball who uh, i'm sure a lot of you know um and this is the definition partially taken from him it's definitely the future of the internet we all agree with that it's massively scale persistent which means that it's still there when we are not there it's interactive interoperable real time platform and what is very important for me it's interconnected the virtual worlds and also the real worlds we have already heard a couple of examples like nike has done this very well and others and we'll show you some also here the most important part is what can you do in the metaverse and that's really socialize work transact play and create so where do we start so i would always start with someone i also admire which is steve jobs so i wouldn't start so much we have talked about before about blockchain and crypto and how it all comes together but for customers as we also the previous our panel very rightly said it's a meta mass so and how to download it and the experience is not yet there but there are experiences which are already quite beautiful so you have to start really with the customer experience and then you have to think about how do i 
uh, now get to this brilliant customer experience where Steve Jobs was obviously the master of it. And I had the opportunity a couple of weeks ago to speak to his previous. He was also on a, on a big, uh, big, you can say, panel. Um, Steve Wozniak here in Switzerland. And he said it was very clear that Steve Jobs had zero clue about technology. Steve, the Stephen Wozniak did everything. But he was absolutely... The amazing in what users want and even go beyond that because the smartphone is something we all use today very naturally but at the time no one was thinking about it and also what we have to acknowledge 10 years earlier the smartphone would have been meaningless because obviously whilst we work backwards to technology we need to also acknowledge that technology is a very important factor. So let's look at some of the customer experience in the metaverse. It all started actually not with Meta, but with a non-fungible token. And some of you might know it. This is the every day's first 5,000 days picture. And when I say picture, it's a similar value like a Picasso had in the past, 69 million in Christie's. And that had really a lot of waves because... This is the first, you can say, visible, non-fungible token of digital art. All of a sudden, also creators like Beepo is the art artist name, um, could really sell and, and express themselves in a completely different way. And it's very beautiful because it's 5,000 days every day is a little picture and pixel itself. What happened then was uh, starts with art and also Sotheby's went into the Sotheby verse. So they created their own verse and you can see they even had a crypto punk uh, where you can now enter this uh, Sotheby's verse. They have uh, regular exhibitions there. You can walk around, you can see things. You can even see things which are not NFT, which is also an option. You can just put anything you want in the galleries. So apart from that, the big question is, where do you socialize? So where do you go? What are the use cases? And one of the biggest use case right now and has a very big aspect, which was mentioned before, which is community, is board apes. So what are the wonders of board apes and what's the fascination about it? Because you will see also there is also obviously um, there's a lot of talk, there's a lot of hype, but there's not only a lot of hype. What I want to show you a little bit of deep dive into the board ape story. So it all started with these four guys in Miami. They created this board ape. They wanted to create a whole new world. And you can see from them, uh, from the pictures, they're relatively young, but they also wanted to do something different. And in some certain senses, also the board apes, they are an expression of themselves. So they say that uh, this is my, my Web3 me. Uh, so it's a little bit like their feel. Uh, so it's really an expression, a very, very creative way of saying who they are. And at the same time, creating this kind of community that there are now bored apes instead of um, natural human being, but very close to basically also what they wanted to do. So Yuga Labs is a company they, they are created and they created 10,000 unique bored apes. So a uh, huge scarcity on that. And obviously that also led to some of the pricing. Uh, some of it even was, uh, was sold at 1.5 million. What's the exciting thing about it is not the board apes itself or the 10,000 which were sold, but you had commercial rights to use it. So what some would do, they would use it for a pop-up store. Some would use it for T-shirts. So there is a huge derivative all of a sudden, sudden uh, arising from all of these rights you have, the ownership and the commercial rights you get when you get these NFTs. Mars even had a limited edition M&M uh, recently, also only for a couple of weeks. Adidas went to, into a partnership with them also to promote board apes. So it goes far beyond this 10,000. You have a reach of millions of people and they have lots of influencers as well. So this all doesn't come by mistake. What they really were doing is created a whole roadmap. Um, so uh, it's, it's not only the board apes you will see from here, and that was only recently disclosed it's from 2021, but you see there was an ape fest uh, that was a, a real physical meeting with all the ape owners in New York, in Hong Kong. Uh, they had uh, a dog even. The story of the dog was very nice because for the board ape holders, you get special benefits. So you can basically, from that little board ape, you derive to something like a very big new ecosystem and universe. 
So it's bigger than what it started with, and that's on purpose. So it doesn't, it's not really by mistake, even though obviously the founders say we couldn't imagine the success we had because after three days they were already sold out. That success you cannot imagine. But also what they did here, we talk a lot about virtual worlds. They created their own virtual worlds a couple of uh, months ago, which is the other side where you also have smart contract with, and NFTs and can buy parts of the virtual world. In addition to that, which is like, oh my God, what are they doing now? Uh, for, for people like me who come from a strong banking financial services background, they even have their own ape coin. And now you can think, okay, what, what does that mean? And if you see this, other side, even the virtual land, so you can buy NFTs, sell NFTs are there in terms of virtual land and other things. And again, what is important here, what was mentioned before in the panel is the gaming side. So it's not just a virtual reality, but what can you do there? You can game and you can game with your board apes. And now everything in the other side is still a bit mystic because things are developing and it's surprises. And it's a bit like treasury hunts, which we know from our childhood. So a lot of the things are very interactive uh, within the community. And they have created a massive, massive big community, which goes far beyond the 10,000. Yeah? Our original board games they have. They even bought uh, the CryptoPunks, which we have seen in the Sotheby's world. And the, with that crypto, what happened there, everyone who had a CryptoPunk, they partnered with Tiffany. So there are also crossovers possible in that ecosystem. And there were around 250 only crypto pendants produced, and they cost 50,000 US dollars. So quite quite a lot of money for having this pendant of your crypto. But it goes on and goes on and goes on. Uh, once you have created this ecosystem, the, it's basically unlimited possibilities what you can do with it. The ApeCoin is uh, already in play, which means that uh, companies like Gucci accept it. What they do with it, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but it's pretty big. And if you now look at this ecosystem map, so it's basically board apes are everywhere. So it's in fashion brands, music was mentioned before, beverage, everything you can do because this NFT gives you certain rights and everyone can use it who has uh, the NFT and it goes far beyond. That means that you can also reach this millions and millions of people and you can use it as a brand, you can use it as an avatar, even on a Swiss watch, which is called Tag Heuer watch, it's a very famous brand here. And the valuation is accordingly, it's 4.5 billion US dollar. And you see here, I marked again the ape coin, but uh, the one of the biggest investors, Andresen Horowitz, um, he also invested in it and he invested in a whole universe of metaverse and NFTs, which I will show you in a second. So, but however, also we have seen the crypto winter, we have seen also high volatility and definitely the same happened to Board Apes. Despite the fact that they created all of this, the Board Apes itself are highly, highly volatile um, yet to be seen, uh, you see it's August 20th, it goes up and down, so expectation it, it goes up again. Uh, and it's even now you have the possibility to put it on a credit card with he, that's another fintech, so it, it's massive. So it goes, uh, what I wanted to show you here, it goes not only from a normal NFT and kind of art and creative, it goes through the whole society, you can almost say, because it goes in banking, music, uh, fashion, goes everywhere. So there's a complete value chain developed, which is far beyond the original NFT. And this part we have seen here, a lot of other companies are following, but not yet in this entire uh, depth. The other amazing thing is that it's a no brand, Board Apes was a no brand, and from nothing they created this. So with this, our partnership, they will reach 90 million globally, 90 million people globally. A big question is still regulatory. Um, we have to really, really uh, watch out for this. Um, so our NFT securities is now the big question in the US. Um, so there's a very pushy uh, headline here. The Feds think Board Ape Yard Club was up to some monkey business. Um, so the Board Ape founders have also communicated they were in um, 
uh, in interviews and were very open about it, said yeah, we are so happy, we, we will talk to the regulator for sure. So uh, everyone wants to sort this out because this will have huge consequences if this is the case. It would completely change the ball game. So I'm pretty sure um, that this will be a big milestone in, in, in this direction, uh, depending on where it goes. And it's not an easy decision. Um, according to the tests which are relevant to value security. So that is beyond board ape will have huge implications. So we talked about before gaming as a platform. So the starting point was where are the experiences? So we have looked at board ape a little bit of a case study also where everything comes together, even gaming was in there. And gaming is usually the entry point, you can almost say, for metaverse experiences. The metaverse itself, the vision I showed you at the beginning is means that everything is connected, everything is interoperable. This is not yet the case, that's why it's a vision. So also the gaming, we, we talk about World Garden, uh, some of them are not on blockchain, like Fortnite and also like Roblox. So therefore, uh, you cannot take assets from one to the other, which is not really what the metaverse is about. So which experiences you have, this is a Fortnite experience, which is pretty amazing because uh, it was an event. So gaming goes far beyond the gaming part. It goes uh, in chatting, as we know from people who are in gaming, they go on Reddit, in particular the younger generation, they communicate, they discuss, and they go to events. Events like this, Ariana Grande, 40 million viewers, Travis Scott also around that number, and Gucci came into gaming. So gaming as a platform, 20 million viewers. Uh, since then, they have established this Gucci garden permanently in Roblox. Um, Roblox is very widely used to create your own experiences. You can create your own games even, while it's Fortnite is one game. But it's interesting to see how they use gaming as a platform really to enter these kind of metaverse experiences and virtual worlds. So Gucci handbag sold for 4500 This is not an NFT even, and it's only virtual. Uh, that was... Uh, that was for everyone quite astonishing, but it also shows you that these are not kids, as we have mentioned before. Also non-kids, I would say a lot of adults and a lot of uh, women are in the gaming part. The last, which was in gaming, which was uh, just a week ago, was Walmart Land. Even Walmart now enter, enters the gaming space and does their own game. So for fashions, this is a great test bed to see, to attract new customers, uh, to engage with them. Uh, the engagement factor, the community building is very important here. Play to Earn was mentioned. The biggest one is definitely called Axie. And I wanted to show you this because it shows you, we also talked about adaption before, that young and old, it doesn't matter. And you can ask them, you know, do you know about blockchain or crypto? And they will say no, because they don't need to know what is blockchain or what is crypto. They just need to play. So, and for them, it was really, really essential in the crisis in COVID to, uh, to have this play to earn possibility because they would make really their whole family income from this game. And you see that it doesn't matter. It's really basically ageless. And these are the kind of experiences we have to look at to see how is it done so that we understand what do we need to do that also our customers, no matter which industry, understand how it all works. The video games are a, a very good um, example for how this all interacts with, is, with each other. Um, so you play, certainly, but you also socialize, you participate, you create, you spend, you watch, and you create a, what we call a flywheel in platform business, which is very typical that you have a lot of interconnectivity between the different parts, which is really the value creation for the user, but obviously also the value creation for the one who runs those systems. We have three billion gamers. We talked about it before, and the our income is very, very high. So 175 billion in annual revenue. That's much more than music and movie uh, movie boxes. So are there a lot? And it's not surprising. A lot of them are in Middle East and Africa. Uh, but second is already are with 408 million even Europe. 
Uh, we know that also in the US there is a lot of gaming here. Uh, but Asia Pacific was 55% is beating everything because uh, also historically I lived in Hong Kong for a number of years. I know that people in Asia Pacific love gaming. Yeah, so uh, everyone who knows Hong Kong knows Macau. There is a big gaming uh, place, uh, but you don't need to go to the casino anymore there because everything is virtual. Gaming has been growing also very strongly since 2018. Uh, the biggest part of gaming which is growing is really esports. Um, that is also a lot of people uh, look at this, play there uh, from young to old. It doesn't really matter. And if you look at the entry point to the metaverse, you see that the video games are really an excellent entry point uh, for everything. And everything is connected, esports, sports, work, social media, uh, user-generated contact, VR, and even connected uh, with life experiences. Yeah? So that is very nice in terms of uh, describing the way how gaming is the entry point, the gateway uh, to the metaverse. So let's have a look. Other people also realize that Microsoft bought uh, a gaming company for 69 billion. Netflix also bought some games. And the famous Andreas Horowitz uh, venture capitalist even created uh, a fund with 600 million, a venture fund for games. And if you look at this, then you see what he, what Andreas Horowitz, what they are up to. They have a whole portfolio investing in NFTs, metaverse, you name it, infrastructure. So the whole Web3 layer. Um, is what they invest in. They themselves have around eight to nine billion, but the whole VC investments, according to McKinsey, are um, estimated to be at 120 billion in the metaverse. So that's quite uh, a lot, and it's 50% more than the year before. That are numbers from 2021. So where do you work would be the other question. Uh, where would you work? So this was a part of where you socialize, or the way you can perhaps earn money. Where do you work? That is our daily life determining, determining yeah? Uh, so Accenture has already tested the metaverse for the last two years with the so-called ninth floor. Uh, they have 150,000 new hires. That was also a couple of weeks ago when they uh, when they really communicated that with, uh, with headsets. Uh, they're using a Microsoft Mesh. Uh, every onboarding happens there now. Uh, so it's quite a big workforce now, which uh, is entertained there. 150,000 overall schemes is not much, but given that this is the start, it was the starting point, is no longer, I will show you more. Uh, also, KPMG has collaboration hubs in the metaverse, yeah? Uh, and this is really big. This came, you see, October 11th, I just put it in last minute, Microsoft and Meta partner to deliver immersive experience for the future of work. This is big. You know how many people have Microsoft Teams? So just imagine now here you can use meta, uh, meta horizon experiences, and this is exactly what is happening here. Yeah. So for Meta, this is this is amazing because you have hundreds of millions of people using Microsoft Teams, and now you can offer this technology to them as well. And you don't need goggles; uh, you can also do that without. The other really amazing thing is that 345 million users use MS Office 365, and that's also to be connected with Meta. So you see that you know, it's a kind of augmented reality view, uh, not with an avatar, which will benefit from that. So that's uh, Microsoft in VR. This is the idea also which is behind it. So the next two, three years, we will see a major change there. Same for uh, users of Xbox now, plus 100 million users, Xbox Cloud Games are will be on Quest. That's another big thing for Meta. So really driving higher adoption here. Again, if you look at this, it's uh, Fortnite is one of the games. So it also games is now, gaming is connected to, um, to, the, to the Quest, to, which means to the headset. We know that there is now a new one, but uh, from that point of view, very, very big adoption, uh, driving very big adoption. And obviously, there are also times when you have to go to see your doctor. And the latest there is that there are also now hospitals catering to medical tourism even so that people can come uh, to UAE or virtually. Uh, there were the first consulting 
um, consulting sessions happening. And for doctors, one of the real, real important things is the applications in medical training. So doctors can train surgery. They can try and fail basically in the metaverse, not in the real world when they test on patients. And what has really amazed me is one is this with augmented reality. So there you see this company called Beyond XR Technology. There are already a lot, a lot of companies in healthcare which will make our life better. And this is what I really love is that there was an operation of conjoined twins. And what happened, uh, the doctors in Brazil and in London, they worked very closely together and they used virtual reality to test and try what would work. So they created basically digital twins of the conjoined twins to figure out how to best separate them. And look at this. I mean, they now separated them and it's absolutely beautiful to see what we can do with virtual reality. So it's not all about the fan factor. It's also about really improving our lives. Metaverse and healthcare, for me, that's the most important part right now. It's also the new area is already here, I would say. It's not even coming. And another part of this is not only healthcare. We see digital twins. You can create your own digital twin. Now you can just test it on Meta. Human is, uh, comes from the Epic Games. So again, gaming is very far advanced in creating Unreal Engine. is another engine where you can create real real worlds and virtual reality so lots of options and this is the second part next to healthcare which is one of my favorites this comes from nvidia so there's an earth digital twin in the omniverse as they call it uh, where you can test climate changes where you can see extreme weather predictions with all the data we have available you will be able also to prevent tsunamis like we had uh, disasters in the past and you will also see climate change, what does it do? And I would also assume that more experiences we can create in the in the metaverse in terms of what happens if we do this and we are we have really, really bad impact on climate, that this will help education. Education is another big part which is so important, where you not only for doctors, but for every one of us, you will be educated much differently. And it's a proven fact that once you are even with no glasses, but in particular with the glasses and goggles on in this virtual world, it feels so real. So if you do things or you spread plastic or something and you train that people please don't do that, uh, then they will feel it. Even though they don't feel it physically, they feel it like it's physical. Uh, same with diversity inclusion. You can do a lot of things there to educate people to be more inclusive and at the end to create a better life for all of us. Another uh, application of the metaverse is the industrial metaverse. Just a short glimpse here. Uh, Siemens, BMW, and others are using this for their factories. Uh, so there, when, if you want to look in, on YouTube, a lot of nice videos of how NVIDIA does this. So process optimization, 1.7 billion a year. And also uh, some of the very dangerous parts you can test before when you deploy certain technology in the factory. How does it work if there are explosions or something in the metaverse, in the virtual world? It definitely you can change things much better as if they happen in the real world. Everything is connected is uh, one, but everything is also affected, you can say, positively and negatively. So we have to also make sure that we have a very positive effect for all those parts. We have to all together shape it, all the players, the government, um, the companies, we as society ourselves, we as members of societies. And everything I showed you is just glimpses of different parts. You have obviously tourism, you have virtual cities, Dubai is very strong right now. So you have all this entire universe basically reshaped by uh, virtual worlds. Why does it happen now? Uh, that's a question I get asked a lot. Is it not like we had before Second Life? No, it's not like Second Life. First, it wasn't on blockchain. And secondly, we have something very different. We have uh, the digital uh, accept accept acceptance in the population is much higher and the converging of tech innovation. So if you look at this, uh, this shows you again the interconnection 
on interactivity between all those different tech developments, digital wallets, blockchain, and for our health living therapies, robotics, genome sequences, everything comes together and is at a very, very high state of development. And everything which happens, happens exponential, which means that we cannot really figure this out with our brain. We have to calculate it because we think linear, but exponential growth is something uh, we cannot comprehend. So it's very often underestimated how fast this all comes together. Just think about the smartphone and the explosion of internet after a couple of years. And what we see here with the virtual worlds is even much, much faster uh, than everything we have seen before. So also the people I heard some of you are also from Web2 area and you could basically look, see and watch. But here you have to be in it to really understand it. Uh, and not everyone has to spend hours in it, but I do think it's smart to get to know more and to experience it and to try it and, and to really learn about it. First step into the metaverse are usually NFTs. Uh, and NFTs, you have seen the support ape, you have seen the, uh, the beautiful picture from, I almost wanted to say painting, from people. But the NFTs have really a vast variety of applications. Um, so this is also one, a lot of the things I'm telling you today are in my daily process. I posted a couple of days ago and a lot of people found this very helpful because this first time shows you really uh, the universe of uh, NFTs, which are much, much more. These are tokens. So these are non-fungible tokens. You cannot, uh, like Bitcoin, you have fungible tokens because you have, you can exchange it one Bitcoin against the other Bitcoin. But here it's connected partially to digital art, but for example, also to real estate, to real real estate, not only to virtual, to collectibles, uh, so ticketing, loyalty programs, there are a lot of possibilities what is happening in this space. Uh, and this is only, again, is a glimpse and is much, much more, uh, it's much, much bigger than what we see here. So the real estate also in the metaverse is one of the, the biggest applications you can say right now in Decentraland, for example, or in Sandbox are the most famous one. And one virtual plot even sold for 4.3 million. You have a big growth there, but you also have to be careful because you see here high volatility like we have seen also with Bored Apes and other uh, art NFTs. Uh, there's someone even commenting freaking metaverse housing bubble just popped who would have thought so a lot of people predicted that um why is why is uh, there any way of value is really about the experiences and when we talk about adoption is again about the experiences as soon as we create more experiences for adults we have also a higher adoption so the only way the metaverse becomes interesting if there are really things to do and places to go when you get there. This is from one of the biggest investors or one of the big investors in virtual real estate, which is every realm the CEO uh, uh, makes this quote. I, in banking, you always say follow the money. Uh, so what happens? We have seen with the ape coin, but there is much, much more. Uh, digital wallets are definitely the entry point also for traditional banking. Uh, you, it's no longer there because uh, cash, you don't pay cash, you don't pay credit card, you don't really pay debit card. What you do, and we can see that here from e-commerce, you pay with a digital wallet. And that is quite uh, impactful when you when we see it later, what you can do with a digital wallet. We have already heard you can buy NFTs, but how you do that, Bitcoin also has last year um, higher volumes of transactions than Visa. And in terms of the real value driver of digital wallet, you see that Meta has already spotted this because they have also now a digital wallet. Some of you might know they have tried digital currency, which is uh, the Libra, which didn't work. But digital wallet means you can put all your NFTs in the digital wallet. You can have even a digital identity there. So this is huge. And th this from the experts, I would say rightly so, got a lot of uh, criticism because people are so ignorant of 
uh, data gathering by Meta also in terms of your digital wallet. So it's not like the MetaMask where you own you own the digital wallet, but MetaMask doesn't really have the data, uh, all the data. But here, when you are on Instagram and you are on Meta and you have NFTs and you have all this data, there is a lot of data gathering going on, which yet has to be uh, supervised. Again, there is no, no real regulatory, I would say, scrutiny of that part which is just developing also wallets are coming uh, in fintechs like Robinhood uh, we have seen also that Robinhood even has the first uh, stable coins uh, Apple is one of the biggest application they now work with MetaMask uh, we have also MasterCard MasterCard is huge they have uh, registered a lot of trademarks uh, you can even buy with your MasterCard so with your credit card you can buy NFTs again increasing adoption Bank of New York Mellon has also now announced partnership with Bitcoin. Uh, and this is very, very big. Uh, Mastercard taps Paxos to launch crypto trading for banks, which means banks have been very hesitant so far. And it's yet to be seen what happens through this uh, pact, you can say, with Paxos they have, because this allows banks very easily to, to uh, offer crypto also to retail customers. You know, uh, if that is good or bad, I wouldn't comment, but I think it's uh, they claim MasterCard and, and Paxos. Obviously, they do then the all the, uh, the security and the privacy data and so on and so forth, which I think from a credit card uh, perspective is MasterCard knows how to do it. There are a couple of other companies also who do this, but my estimate would be that a number of banks will go into partnerships like we have seen other big banks are having partnership, Coinbase, FTX, all those. And this is another one which is very big in Latin America. Mercado Libre now has their own coin. Uh, Mercado Libre, for those maybe who are not living in Latin America, it's like Amazon or any other big e-commerce platform. Uh, so a lot of things are happening and they're happening first. Um, so you almost have every day some news. So a lot of the stuff you see here has happened in the last two weeks even. Yeah. And, it, and it is continuing. So the NFT FI ecosystem is big and you see that there are no banks involved. They're all uh, separate companies, a whole ecosystem again uh, developing. And if on top of that, you look at uh, decentralized finance, it's, it's even bigger. But I just choose uh, the NFT FI ecosystem just for you to have a look that there are marketplaces you can lend against. Also board Ape or there were already loans given or crypto um, crypto punk. Uh, so you can basically do a lot with, with NFTs and there are a lot of uh, different players involved in this entire ecosystem. Decentralized finance, uh, financial revolution, so another big thing. So the question also always arising is the metaverse only a hype. And I would look at emerging trends and uh, emerging tech, uh, what happens here. So it's, a pic it's a basically an analysis and a forecast from Gartner, uh, which I find personally very helpful. And you see here, the metaverse is uh, probably not yet even in a hype, even though we always say it's in a hype. But from a technical point of view, uh, we just started the innovation. So usually the hype starts with an innovation. You go through a peak of inflated expectation and then you are very disappointed, you can almost say. And only after that, you come into productivity. So metaverse will take, or also that's nice about the Gardner forecast, another 10 years, the vision at least, even though we have a lot of virtual worlds available, which have separate avatars, which are like separate countries where you need separate registration. Some are now... Uh, getting a little bit of interconnectivity. Um, some avatars you can use in different places, like uh, Ready Player Me is partnering with a lot of different places. And we have also Web3, we have um, NFTs here on the top, decentralized identity. So a lot of things are happening, maybe even faster. Uh, so everything comes together, but at a different speed. But having said that, as we saw before, everything is interconnected and already quite far advanced. And also the assumption is that like augmented reality uh, will come even more fast because we, we use it already ev nearly everywhere in every application. 
So JP Morgan um, is one of the banks who also put out a quite good report. Uh, the quote I loved the most about it, so should you go into the metaverse, the massive asymmetrical risk of being left behind is worth the incremental investment needed to get started and to explore this new digital landscape yourself. So it doesn't mean that you should jump into the metaverse. It's actually the opposite, but you should get busy with it, I would say, and talk to people are like me, hopefully, are, who are very much every day in this space. What we do at the Metaverse Academy is that we train people, we provide experiences. Uh, we also go beyond that. Uh, we are very fortunate because the same team who trains people is also building. So we have Web3 developers, we have gamers. Uh, and that's how we try to help brands to develop what is the right place for them because don't do just uh, go into Decentraland because everyone is there or into Sandbox or into Roblox. You really have to find out for your use case what is the right use case and where to go and what to do. Is it NFT or something else? Thank you very much. Um, if you love to hear more from me, then obviously you can follow me. I put the QR code here and I'm very, very happy now to get your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Buchenfeld. Uh, just one question that's come from the audience is, uh, you know, according to you, what is the biggest upside? Uh, and if there is one downside of the metaverse adoption in the society, uh, what in your opinion is that? So the biggest upside is to think about how it can improve our lives. So that's what I was trying to show also with the healthcare, for example, it's a good example. Education is another example. Uh, the biggest downside is what we have seen in Ready Player One in the video. If everyone is only in a virtual world, uh, which was called Oasis in that movie. Uh, so I recommend everyone to, to really view it. It's uh, the horror, you can say, um, because everyone is just escaping. So if we don't care anymore about what happens in the real world and just say everything is destroyed here, we go somewhere else. This is not really how it should be. We should use the metaverse to not replace our world, but to really make our experiences better. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bogenfeld. Uh, uh, thank you for your time today. I think we've had an absolutely smashing and wow inspiring session. Uh, thank you. And, and we look forward to meeting you again uh, in the next uh, Crypto World Conference. Thank you again. Thanks a lot. Thank you.